All right, good evening. Um, I wanted to give you the short rundown here on our cruise control and the issues with those. And I have to show you a picture because this particular unit you're seeing right now in this picture is actually in my car and this is the working unit right now. I put this to the side next to the uh, brake paddle and I still have my original one installed in there. I have to unscrew this and you if you have done this before you know it it's not an easy task to get there because you have to work upside down and crawl into the space to get this actually out i may do this tomorrow but anyway i had this unit on my in my lap this morning and the first thing i actually did is i removed these two transistors and these two transistors and i tested them and they both checked out well with no problems and if you remember this was the unit where i actually had hooked up the actuator soldered onto here and we found out that the clutch wasn't working but the motor was working and so and i had mentioned in that video that i was anticipating one of these two it wasn't the case and i also looked at these two transistors and these two transistors which are the drivers for these here from the controller over these two transistors to set and over from here to these two to the set. And one that's the clutch and one that's the motor. Um, then I checked all the diodes in here. They're all okay. Then I checked all the 0 0.1 ohm resistors, which are the green ones with the black line going across it. They all checked out. Then I checked the op amp, the LM2901, that checked out. So that left me only with one thing, and this is what I read on these message boards. Oh, and then these four, these six capacitors and this capacitor here, they're all good on this unit. And the reason for this was this came out of a car, out of a um, 560 SEL, 1988 560 SEL, which was garaged until it was totaled in an accident. So that's how I got this unit and I got the thing for 19 bucks inclusive, including free shipping. And those ones are good. Now, remember when I had my unit out, I had to replace them because my car was parked for years outside in California, in San Diego. <clears throat> and so those were baked here. These two were really bad. Those were bad. These are actually good on this unit. They're, they're still well within in spec. So that makes a big difference if a car, if a vehicle is garaged or not garaged. But the problem with those, and I've read this, is that people wrote that they reheated all the solder joints. And I'm looking at this and I say, well... This is a double-sided circuit board, but it is not a true double-sided circuit board in the sense of double-sided as we have it with plated through holes. What we usually do in the electronics business, which I'm, which my main business is, designing these circuit boards and, and doing this kind of stuff, developing these circuits, um, we connect the two layers together, and that is done in a plating. So you drill a hole through those both couples couple sides, a couple layers on each side, top layer, bottom layer. And then you put palladium seats on there. And then you use uh, plat uh, not uh, palladium to build this up. And then you use a couple uh, bath electrolysis with couple and you build up that internal tube, which connects them both layers. So when you put a, con a component in there, it has a tube basically in the thickness of the circuit board which is then later up filled up with solder when it is soldered so you have solder on the bottom layer and through the capillo effect it will be sucked up and you also have it on the top so the whole pin of the or the whole leg of the component is completely surrounded by solder over from one layer to the top layer and in between it has a secure connection now this here, what you see here is what they did is they have a ground plane on the top, what they call their top layer. And you can see here, here's one of these. They have a bridge and on the right hand side on that wire, let me go and zoom in. It's underneath it, it is soldered here on the right hand side and on the left hand side they soldered it on the top layer and the top layer the couple is basically covered by the solder mask and all of these other parts here no other pins are connected and they have one up here and they have one over here on the back side you can see this that's hidden so they have three of these bridges which connect the ground pin from here to uh 
to these layers and distributes the ground evenly around the system. They need to be reheated first. And then the problem is, the, uh, you can see this, this is a brownish color. And uh, the trait name for the substrate was called phenoliac. And that is basically a paper-based layered uh, rosin, resin, rosin-based um, uh, compressed material, which is basically, you know, layer for layer. It's like not fiberglass, but it's phenolic. And um, that's what we used in the 60s and 70s for single-sided boards primarily. All of your hi-fi electronics out of those years, they were made with those circuit boards and they were used primarily for single-sided boards. And this is the reason why they put that conformal coating on there because it is like a wax paper, which has that, that um, rosin, rosin, re resin based, um, yeah, that's resin, resin or rosin, rosin based. It's, I think it's rosin based actually. Um, impregnation impregnated in there so it is pressed together under heat and that makes that material and but that will absorb water moisture from humidity like a sponge so you put conformal coating on it the interesting thing is this and all their electronics they got like in these boxes their regular double-sided circuit boards with plated through holes they didn't put any conformal coating on it the only reason, the only board they put conformal coating in in the entire car, as far as I can tell you this, is this unit because of the circuit board material they use. And now what happens on those is not so much that the uh, heat exposure and heat cold and all of this stuff is, is loosening the parts. That's not the case. What happens here is that the circuit board, the solder, is only attached to the eye or to the ring where it goes through on the other side. Unfortunately, I can't flip this around it, but that is basically where your solder connection is. Like here, <clears throat> and that uh, couple layer is probably uh, maybe six mil or three mil in thickness, three thousandths of an inch, six thousandths of an inch. And that's where that component holds itself to it on one side only. So it is like under pressure, from the top side pulled in and then soldered. And what happens is the, the connection of the pin itself is a different material than the solder. So what I did is what you can do is you get 6337 tinlet uh, solder, electronic solder with a rosin based flux, the high grade stuff, the thinner one. And then you reheat every one of these uh, solder connection on the other side. Every one, every component pin you see here and these these connecting uh, wires you have here on the other side, you heat them up, you put some fresh solder on there. You don't have to strip off the conformal coating. You can do it with it because the rosin-based flux will clear this out of the hole and it will rejuvenate the solder connection. And the reason how they got to this was they didn't do this correctly on a wave solder machine because that phenolic stuff cannot be run well on wave solder. And so they had to run this fairly quickly over the wave solder, otherwise the board would have melted, which means certain pins have more solder and other pins have less solder. And you will see this, even though the solder eyelet, the actual ring, is the same size in circumference and hole size, they have different amounts of solder on there. When you usually go slowly over a wave solder machine or you put this in a drag solder machine or dip solder machine, <clears throat> each pin has the same amount, exact same amount of solder on it. And uh, the thinner ones, the thicker ones, all of them. Yeah, two things are going to depend on, on a drag solder, dip solder. It is just simply the time you put that into the solder bath. And usually it's around five seconds, eight seconds on a fiberglass board. If you do eight seconds, five to eight seconds on this board, you're going to have the whole board literally melting in your solder bath. So when they did this, they ran this over a wave solder machine to, to minimize the time it is exposed to that 400 degrees Celsius hot solder, which 
that was every time you have 63, 37, you run at very high temperatures. Uh, with a rosin-based solder uh, flux, then you can get real good results that's still unbeatable today. And I still use it uh, because you can't beat the connections. And this is how they wound up with the different solder amounts on these different solder spots or solder connections. And that's what's causing you problems now is the H and air oxygen has broken into this and this has become corroded and that's why that is important if you want to restore this to use a solder a thin solder like a 0.032 would be enough with rosin flux in it uh, and this way you can get this it's a little bit time consuming but this is how i restored the board as you see it the only thing i did i did not change the capacitors yet and there were no failures in the semiconductors in here it was simply reheating the solder spots rejuvenating the solders solder connections that's restored the entire board and like i said it's the only reason why they got to this was because of this phenolic circuit board what they used if they would have used fr4 with plated through holes we wouldn't be talking about this because your quiz control would be working that concludes it um if you have any questions just post them in the comments or one thing i wanted to mention is it is always helpful on my videos if you read the description because sometimes during a video i forget something or i say something wrong or I wanted to say something differently from the way I actually said it, then uh, I usually update this in the description. So whenever you watch a video, make sure if you're interested in it and you really want to know everything is to read the description. There could be details in the descriptions, which I have not in the video, <clears throat> additional things or corrections. Okay. And uh, I'm going to make one other short video and we will update you then. Okay. Thank you.